All right, let's do some more video analysis. So this uh, thrower right here actually sent a few emails to me. We were having some trouble getting the videos emailed to me, so she sent them over in Google Drive. And uh, for some reason, I wasn't able to download them. So this one, unfortunately, I'm going to have to try to... I can't go frame by frame, uh, but I'm going to have to go kind of like hitting the play button and the pause button really quickly. So excuse any... Uh, weird, you know, clicking that you're hearing in this video analysis, but um, it looks like from the email that was sent that she has a coach telling her to do one thing. She's gone to other kind of coaches like myself, online coaches, and maybe local coaches to her who have tried to give her another thing to do. So she sent three videos saying that the videos were different. You know, one video is kind of doing what a coach says to do. One video is doing what uh, this other uh, local coach is saying to do. And then one video trying to put some things into her throw that I've talked about online. But honestly, they all they all look the same to me. Um, so I'm going to show you real quick, but they do. They honestly, they all look exactly the same. Let's pause it real quick. So here's the first video. See here, just looks very unsure of yourself in the circle. That's, I think, what kind of I can take from all of these videos is that you look very unsure of yourself. Almost like you're not sure what to do first, what to do second, or anything like that. So that's video one. So this is video two. You can see video two looks exactly the same as video one, and this is video three. Looks exactly the same. So well, you can see this is this is um, this is what I call too many cooks in the kitchen. Okay, and you've got multiple coaches telling you multiple things. You're watching videos online. You're trying to incorporate a lot of what you're seeing on my channel and other channels into what you're doing at practice. And you've got three or four, maybe even more, different opinions of what you should be doing. And you seem very unsure of yourself when you get in the circle. Um, either you're thinking about way too many things or there's just so many things that have been thrown at you that you don't know what to fix first or what to look at first. Um, you know, this is the equivalent if you were making, um, for example, if you were making dinner and you had way too many ingredients, um, it's going to make the food taste like crap. You know, you only need to sprinkle in a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But when you have people constantly adding ingredients, constantly throwing things into the pot, so to speak, it's not going to turn out tasting well at all. Um, so what I'm going to try to do here is give you two or three definitive things that will make your throw so much better. Um, just definitive, definitive things where you can say, this is going to add distance, and these are the two or three things that I'm going to work on for the next couple of days to get more distance. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to fix your positioning in the back. So if you go, go to the Glide Shot Put series that I did recently, it's a 10-part series. The first, we say right in the first video, everything starts in the back of the circle. Okay, and if you want to have something happen in the middle or at the end of the throw, it needs to be there in the beginning of the throw. And the first video talks about position. So what I want to see is I want your shoulders at the same level as your hips. So your back should be as flat as this table behind you. That means that we want to get your head and your shoulders level with your hips. And this right arm should almost be touching the ground. Okay, so you need to keep the knee bent just about where it is now. You don't have to get a big bend. You may even have to straighten the knee out a little bit, push your knee back a little bit. But you've got to get your hips over your ankle, 
Your hips right now are sitting behind the ankle. Hips over the ankle, head down, shoulders down, chest down, right hand basically about to scrape the floor. That's going to get you in a nice low position. And what that's going to do, yeah, it's not going to work. What that's going to do is it's going to get you in a low position. Let's see if I can get to it here in the middle of the throw. So you can see here when you get to the middle of the throw, you're basically standing completely upright. Okay? So if you're standing upright in the middle, you've probably got coaches that are going, well, we've got to get you lower in the middle. That's all well and good, but if you're too tall in the back, you're not going to be able to be low in the middle. Start low in the back, and then you're going to have a much easier time getting low in the middle. That's going to improve leverage. That's going to improve how far back the shot put is behind your, right, your uh, left leg. Um, all that stuff is going to improve if you can keep your body lower in the middle. So start low in the back. I want a nice flat back, just like that table is behind you. Nice flat back um, as you glide. So start with a flat back and try to stay low. Pretend like you're trying to glide under a table. Or pretend you're at Home Depot when you're trying to glide underneath that bottom shelf at Home Depot. Okay? Don't push the head up. Don't throw the shoulders back. Start nice and low and stay there. Okay, the second thing, which you're probably not going to be able to see in any of these videos, but if we go back and try to... Actually, we've got a pretty good shot right here. If we go back and take a look, your right foot is actually landing first. So when you glide, your right foot is hitting first then your left foot is coming down. You can see it here how the right foot is kind of in focus because it's already stopped moving. The left foot, your power foot, is blurry because it hasn't. Okay, see that? So the right foot hit first, your left foot hit second. So we need to switch that around. I need the power foot, your left foot, needs to hit first. Then your right foot, your blocking foot, needs to hit second. So it needs to be left, right, left, right. And it's quick. It's glide, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So it's not at the same time, and it's not right, left. It's left, right, boom, boom, super quick, left, right. You're just hitting in an opposite position, which is right, left. Okay, so as a lefty, you need to go power foot first, left foot first, then the right foot. So stay low in the back, and then when you get into your power position, it's left, right. Okay, not at the same time, and not the other way around. So left, right. It keeps everything going through the circle. Momentum is your friend. Okay, so it keeps that mo momentum going from the back of the circle, through the middle, and into the finish. Okay, but landing with this front foot, with your right foot first, not good. We got to go left foot first. Okay, and the last thing is, if we just watch the finish here of your throw, take a look at your feet. Ah, I missed it. Let's see if I can pause it here. Uh, let me see if I can catch it. Look at your feet. So your feet, I gotta do this quickly. Boom. Your feet here in this position, now you've got a great extension with that left arm. You're blocking really well with that right arm. You can see your upper body is sort of in a position to throw, but your lower body really hasn't done anything to stop. Okay, so your lower body just kind of uh, swirls around. Almost, I think you said you're in Georgia. So you guys don't get a whole lot of snow and a whole lot of ice down there. But if you've ever been on ice, ice is really slippery. Okay, so it kind of looks like you're skating or, you know, after mom or dad washes the floor that you're on, it's probably slippery. So imagine you were standing with your socks on, on a really slippery floor. That's what it looks like here with your shoes. It looks like you're not actually pushing into the ground. It looks like you're kind of skating on top of the ground, kind of sliding your feet on top of the ground. And that's probably what's happening in the circle, is that we don't want you to just kind of slide those feet around, okay? So let me show you again. See how those feet just kind of twist? Your legs just kind of twist. You don't really push. You don't have a definitive kind of strike or hit with those legs. 
So you've got to think of it, and we talk about this in the last, or second to last video of that glide shot put series, is that you want to really hit. You want to really kind of get in a position and strike the ground. You want to get really tight and block with that lower body. The lower body can't be loose and just kind of like swivel around on you. You need the lower body to boom. You've got to ground that right foot, ground your blocking foot. You've got to stop that right side. You've got to push with your power side, push with that left foot, push those hips forward and explode into the throw. This is kind of just like sliding around on the circle. Okay. The old joke being, you know, Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. He pushes the earth down. Okay, we want you, don't just slide around on top of the circle. I want you to try to actually crack the cement circle with your feet. I want you to push the earth down. I want you to push the cement circle down into the dirt. That's how hard I want you pushing with your feet. Don't just slide around on top of the circle like this. Okay, if you were doing this in your house... I would be afraid. I'd say, man, I don't want to crack any of these tiles. I'm going to push so hard with my left foot, and I'm going to ground so hard with my right foot that I'm going to crack these tiles that are on the floor. And I, uh, man, if I was mom or dad, I'd be like, hey, huh, you better stop doing that on the tile because you're going to crack one of those things. Your feet are hitting so hard, and you're blocking so hard, and you're pushing so hard with your lower body that you're going to end up cracking those tiles that's underneath you. Okay, so try and try to really push with the feet. So those are the three big things that I think are going to have the biggest impact on your throws over the next couple of days as you get into your bigger meets, okay? We want to make sure you start low in the back. Okay, we want to make sure that you're landing left foot first because you're left-handed. Power foot first, your left foot first, then the right. Remember, it's a quick one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, left, right, left, right, left, right, power block. Okay, so it's quick, boom, boom, left foot, then the right foot, and then we want you to block. We want you to actually stop this lower body, crack the cement, crack the earth, push the cement circle down into the ground. Okay, really try to break the cement, and that's going to help you put more force into your throw. So those three things are going to help you out quite a bit. And I would really just work on those three things. I don't think there's any coach in the history of track and field coaching that's going to disagree with anything that I've said here. Okay, start lower in the back, land power foot first, then the blocking foot, and really try to block hard and push through the ground, not slide on top of it. If anyone has any arguments with that, I would love to hear them. So this is something that I think your coach would 100% agree with. This is something that I think the other coach that you're going to down in that area would 100% agree with. And I think this is something that any coach online would 100% agree with. These are three fundamental building blocks of a really good glide. Uh, hopefully no one's teaching you to land right foot first. I really hope that's the case or landing with both feet at the same time because that's not how it works and I hope no one's teaching you to kind of twist your feet around like this at the end because that is a hundred percent wrong don't do that anymore it's power foot first blocking foot first and then don't slide on top of the cement try to crack the cement and push as hard as possible with your lower body to put more force into that throw all right so Try that out. Let me know how that goes. I think you said you have a big meet coming up in a couple days. So hopefully this helps you out. Anybody else, I hope this helps you out too. But if you have any questions, please make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And I will get to them as soon as possible.